Film Society at Lincoln Center. Uh, my name is Scott Fondas. I'm the Associate Program Director for the Film Society and the co-curator with the, the great indie producer Ted Hope of this series, Indie Night, which is now in its uh, third installment uh, tonight, and it's our third sold-out screening. So thanks very much to all of you for helping to make that happen. Uh, Ted is actually on a plane back from Hot Docs in Toronto as we speak, and he's been delayed and may not make it back in time for the Q&A. Hopefully he will, but if not, I'll be flying solo tonight. It'll doubtless be less entertaining, but uh, I will try my best. Um, we also have uh, uh, a couple of announcements. I, I want to mention um, uh, the people from Fandor who are in the room tonight who are, are coming on board to support uh, both this series and our new monthly documentary series, Art of the Real, uh, starting in June. And uh, as you can see from the slide behind me, we have a new presenting sponsor of this series uh, starting tonight, which is uh, RBC, the Royal Bank of Canada. Uh, this, is, uh, this continues uh, RBC's involvement with the Film Society. They're uh, a major supporter of the arts in general. They're one of our year-round sponsors. Uh, they're also our partner on a program called Emerging Visions, which we launched uh, during the New York Film Festival last year, uh, and which is another program like this designed to support and showcase the work of emerging filmmakers. Uh, so by putting their support behind this program, it's just another way in which RBC is uh, championing indie filmmakers from uh, both America and around the world. Tonight's film is our first international uh, screening in this series. It represents the uh, filmmaking debut of a really talented original voice, uh, someone I'm going to have the pleasure of introducing to you in a second here. It, uh, as I was telling him a few moments ago, as a as, a, as a, genre, a fan of genre films, it reminded me in many ways of a movie like uh, George Lucas's THX 1138, a little bit of uh, Blade Runner in its vision of a dystopian future, and uh, in a real emphasis on character and drama uh, as opposed to just spectacular set pieces. Although it is an amazingly visually accomplished film for a movie made on an extremely low budget, incredibly inventive, very resourceful, and uh, no surprise that it uh, got him signed by a big Hollywood agency. Uh, <laughs> so this next film will probably be made for a somewhat large amount. Um, uh, so uh, without further ado, actually, I'm going to welcome the writer-director of Carré Blanc, Jean-Baptiste Leonetti. difficult because they just like in Chinese uh, film just to thank you to be there because um, uh, it's an honor for me to, to screen my movie here in New York I feel like I have been there many many times and uh, I would like to, to thank Ted for being here because uh, Ted loved the movie and uh, I think he has understood the best way to, to show to the people and how we love the movie to show the movie. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so I'll be back for a Q&A afterwards. And uh, in case I forget to mention it later, I just want to remind everybody that uh, by buying a ticket to the screening tonight and any night that you come to Indie Night, uh, you get a 10% discount off of uh, your purchase at the Indie Food and Wine Company, the uh, cafe in the lobby. So hopefully after the Q&A, we'll all have joined to, to drink and bite to eat and whatever and just can continue conversation. See you after the screening.
just a love story in a special context. Uh, the context is like uh, another character in the movie. But to me, it's a simple love story uh, with a simple problem. Uh, couple is, uh, is doesn't succeed to, to stay together. The love is gone or is going, is lived. And um, it was just a love story. But uh, to me, it was really important to show this love story in, a, in another context, like a reali realistic context, to show something with a kind of twist, just to um, to get the character bigger than, than the life. And uh, if you have a special context, you can put the character, uh, you can give another side to the character. And it's uh, what I wanted to do. this test existed. Uh, I've seen this test uh, when I was uh, um, when I was writing the script. Uh, I was looking for about a uh, new technique of management. And during the 70s and the 80s, people totally crazy create this kind of test. But uh, when I've seen this test, there is no solution. So I spent maybe three months to find the solution. Uh, if you are against the wall, uh, how to, to, to get back, if you are in a circle, how to... Uh, and uh, after three, three months, I, I find the solution, but it was exact, I was ex exhausted. And I always imagine uh, what kind of uh, pain it was for people uh, when they were supposed to, 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 to do this test. Uh, because I'm, I'm thinking of this test. Really? Strangely, the, the cutting is fast. No, believe me, there is uh, maybe uh, 1,500 uh, cuts in this movie. It's uh, if I put 200 uh, cut more, it's like an action movie. <laughs> no, no, but it's true. It's true. Uh, you you don't feel that because uh, the editing is a uh, is a uh, like uh, is look like um, uh, something really calm, but we have cut. Always, 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 and it's a, it's a fast editing, in fact. But the pace is slow. But we, there, is, there are a lot of, lot of frame in the movie, a lot of frame. And uh, uh, regarding the, the visual style, uh, it's not complicated. Uh, I'm a director because I've seen movies like Clute, Manhattan Man, all this movie in New York during the 70s, and I was uh, 10 years, and I... When I've seen Marathon Man for the first time, uh, and I've seen Marathon Man in LA two weeks ago on a big theater with Robert Evans, and it was unbelievable to see this movie on a big theater. Uh, it doesn't move, it's perfect. And uh, all the style uh, come from these years, from the 70s, from the paranoid cinema, uh, from the 70s, All President Men, Clute, Parallax View, uh, Thriller of the Condor, Marathon Man, and uh, uh, Clute essentially clute and uh, when I was uh, shooting the movie uh, always always I was thinking about uh, clute and, uh, exactly the prince of darkness yes 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 sure sure sure
Ah, yes. C'est une autre story. Hein. Yes. It was uh, it was for Sami uh, directly. For the woman, it was complicated because I wanted someone else before, uh, another woman. And after, uh, I meet Julie and um, I wasn't uh, convinced. But when I put them together in a frame, it was perfect. It was perfect. The kind of contrast, uh, the kind of uh, real, real um, attachment, and uh, it was perfect for me. The problem is not, is not um, that the movie is a low budget. Because when you have a low budget and you are co-producer, and I was co-producer of the movie, the problem is not here. You are free. You can uh, try what you want. The problem is the time. And uh, you know you you will uh, you won't have the time during the shooting because it's very short. So you have to prepare before, long time before. And I uh, I decide to start the shooting maybe one year before the first shooting. I took maybe 5,000 photos of the, of the location, of the building, of everything. And uh, the main challenge of the movie was uh, to, to don't use SFX. And uh, it, there is a SFX in the movie, but uh, they are almost invisible because um, if you if you put the hand in the SFX world, it's finished for you. You are totally broke at the end of the day for nothing because uh, the, the pictures are not realistic and uh, you, can, uh, you can have exactly what you want. So uh, the main problem was to find the good location with a good angle to, to give um, a strong vision of this world with no SFX. Uh, in Luxembourg city, in uh, Belgium, uh, essentially in Belgium and Luxembourg. Uh, Luxembourg, Luxembourg is a place, one of the worst places in the world. <laughs> People are like uh, living dead, terrible. After five, uh, everything explodes. It's a desert like that. No problem with uh, with the location manager because there is nobody on the street. So. Uh, <laughs> You can do what you want. No, no, no traffic. So uh, I want a street empty. No problem. Uh, you have a street empty, and uh, and it was really great. But uh, it was just a nightmare to live in this city. But to shoot is great. pretty close. It's pretty close, uh, except the problem during the pre-production, I have to rewrite, uh, I have to cancel a few, si few scenes, uh, and I was uh, in love with these scenes, but it was too expensive. But for the, for the story, it's uh, really close, really close than the, than the story. Not really close. I can't talk about the sound design because uh, this man explained you why I can't take I can't talk about the sound design. During the sound, you have uh, almost the sound behind the screen and not the sound in the in the theater. I was uh, really sad for you because I spent a lot of time on the sound. But you have the spirit, but not, uh, not the technique of the sound, but you have the spirit. You know, I spent maybe six months on the sound with uh, 
sound designers who have something very interesting and unfortunately, the first cleaning in New York is not the good one for the sound. The first time, sorry for you, but uh, uh, now you have it's really important because we have to think this when we, when we have finished the editing, to us the sound was a, another character like the atmosphere. And uh, it means something. It's not like uh, sound design. And uh, we want to, we wanted to cross the sound with uh, with the with the music. And at the end of the day, we wanted to show something where it was impossible to understand which part is the sound, which part is the music. And it's really important. It was really important to me because in this kind of movie where you have no dialogues, you can support the emotion with the music. And it's a trap because you fucked your movie with this kind of things. Because you, after you have, um, okay, now it's sad, now it's funny, now it's uh, just a dark humor, and you can you can support that with the music. And uh, sometimes if if you start to doubt because uh, you have some kind of doubt during the editing, you you are able to to use this process. And uh, I decide after uh, two months of editing to 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 mix the sound and the, the music together just to have on to, because I don't want to have the choice. You see what I mean? And decide to, to tell the story with the sound and the music together. And now it's really difficult to know, except, except the sequence, the scene with the, with the phone, with the phone call, it's difficult to know where is the music and where is the sound. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm happy. It's simple. Huh? It's uh, okay. Go to the television and uh, uh, watch uh, this. Uh, for example, imagine you are uh, you are an alien. You arrive. Uh, you arrive in on Earth, and you ask me why football. It's the same thing. It's uh, why uh, Formula One or why uh, basketball. It's the same thing. Uh, this world is a kind of parable. Okay, it's pretty close than our world, but it's not exactly our world. But I'm really fascinated by the role of the the role of the sport in our world. It's so huge. It's so important. We are so uh, hypnotized hypnotized by the by the sport, just with the ball. Okay, the ball is the main main thing in the world. And now, with the croquet, the ball is the main thing of their world. And it's so stupid, but it's stupid like our world. With uh, basketball, with the uh, baseball, with the uh, football, with uh, all these things, with ball. The problem with this kind of film uh, is to to give a message to the people. I don't want to give a message because if you start to give a message, uh, there is a moral, and if you have a moral, when you shoot a movie, it's not a great thing, I think, yeah. because there is no moral. I think, um, as I told you uh, at the beginning of the Q and A, to me. There is no message. I don't want to show how this world is uh, is hard. Uh, if we don't, uh, well, if we don't care, uh, we we have the risk to have this kind of world in ten years or twenty years. No, I don't think. Uh, okay, I think just um, um, it's a kind of illustration just to support the love story. Um, to me, this movie is not. It's just um, a love story with a. With an atmosphere, with a, a part of, can of dark humor, of like the lot speaker when the guy falls. Uh, uh, yes, because it's this kind of thing. Sometimes, w w 
in the real life, sometimes you have the, you have you are in front of this kind of situation. You you are dying, and a guy uh, ask you to sign for a washing machine, something like that. And uh, to me, it's the same thing. I like hamburger, it depends on uh, what kind of meal. Uh, <laughs> um, no, I think just um, if, we, if, you, uh, uh, if you upcycle, upcycle yes. something in food, <laughs> yes, it's a real, it's to me it's a real barbarie. Because you, 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 you take a human, human life or a life, a simple life, and you decide to to transform these things in food. You do that every day with uh, with vegetables, with uh, with uh, with duck, with uh, with beef, uh, and sometimes we do that with uh, with human. Um, to me, the problem is not people eat people. The problem is it's not a problem for them. And it's just what I'm sh why, uh, what, what I show during the during the, the movie. Okay, people eat people, and it's not a problem. That's a real barbarie for me, not to eat people, because if you are totally starving, if your child is uh, dying because he's not eating, you give him everything, and maybe human flesh. Now maybe in the during the the big famine in uh, with Stalin. Uh, parents give them human flesh to 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 their to their children because uh, if they don't e if they if they don't eat, they're dying. And um, but it was a drum for them. And in this movie, it's totally normal. It's like uh, a simple experience to go to McDo or to buy a Macintosh, same thing. love to, to shoot a movie in the United States, not for the budget, or but because I love the actor here and uh, I love the context and uh, if I am a director now, it's because I've seen American movie when I was a child and I give a movie to this child now, an American movie. Uh, I would love to make a maybe a prequel, why not, if it is interesting. Uh, but. Um, a real good, great re American revenge movie. <laughs> Not with Steven Seagal, but uh, <laughs> no, a great, a, a strong and efficient story. Um, and you have a lot of good writers for that, like Russell Brown's, like people like this. And uh, uh, it's, it's huge. And I sh I'm sure I can find something in this, uh, in this territory. Bounds, uh, other people like this uh, are able to to give to the audience something really strong and simple. With a good sound. <laughs> Thank you.